after a long reign of FIFA NFC, the football game market might change forever. A new competitor is on the horizon. UFL came in with a bang and ran an open beta for three days. Millions of players used the chance to give it a try and form an own impression for this free-to-play football simulation. Is UFL a serious contender for EA Sports FC? Here is our opinion. Well, this is new. After 10 years of publishing videos on this channel, it's the first time that we talk about another football game. Don't worry, you still can expect our tutorials and guides on FC as usual. But I think it's definitely worth having a look at UFL, which is expected to launch later this year. I played the open beta of UFL for several hours and I'm far away from mastering this game nor being an expert. But I will share my first impressions mainly on the gameplay side of things. Is it fair to compare UFL and FC? One is developed from a billion dollar company for decades. The other works out of a smaller budget and has to build it up from the ground in just a few years. It's obvious that UFL has to catch up and we can't expect the same standards. So we have to keep this in mind when evaluating the game as well as that this was an open beta. So some glitches and bugs have to be expected. First off, the graphics were good and also sufficient for a football game. Let's face it, 99% of the playing time we look at a green pitch and some small players moving around. I rarely spend time in zoomed in replay sessions nor do I enjoy watching goal celebrations. So it will be very hard for me to bring more depth into this conversation. The overall presentation is on a decent level, but I think in terms of atmosphere UFL still has some room for improvement. The gameplay in general feels a bit slower and open in comparison to FC, as the spaces don't feel as condensed. Theoretically, this would allow for quicker play and we can pull this off from time to time. But as soon as we get into tighter areas, it slows down quite a lot due to missing animations. When a player doesn't immediately trap the ball or isn't able to turn directly because there isn't a proper animation to be displayed, this will slow down the game as we need those animations to transition from one action to another. But we will come to that just in a bit. For passing we have a lot to unravel. Passing felt a little bit less assisted. While in FC the passing assistant can help you to get the pass around an opponent's player, in UFL this wasn't as noticeable. On the other hand, it was sometimes really hard to give the pass the appropriate power or selecting the desired receiver by input of power and direction of the left stick. Unfortunately, in the beta we didn't have any options in terms of passing assistance, so we don't really know how it currently works. The power of passes was also sometimes kinda interesting. I don't know how you feel about it, but some passes out of the blue start as a laser beam and then rapidly fall off in speed. The ball weight isn't there yet, it looks. Personally, I think that passing could be a little bit more difficult in the way how you have to set up the pass before playing it. You can get away with a rather sloppy setup which doesn't feel as rewarding. You see an open teammate or a chance to pass the ball and you just can go for it, instead of taking an extra touch. These are things we like to teach for FC, especially in our in-depth tutorials at the Guide Plus. For example with really expert attacking concepts like breaking the game direction. You can check it out for free by clicking the icon in the top right corner or the link in the video description. Coming back to UFL, what might hinder you in terms of passing is the responsiveness, when you want to go for some direct play. To play one touch passes, your input of the next pass has to be quite early. I suspect that this is also due to restrictions in terms of animations. When you press the passing button too late, the game isn't able to pull off a good looking animation anymore. This in combination with some limitations and dribblings makes it kinda hard to create something in and around the box. So let's talk about dribbling. I think this is causing the biggest irritation at the beginning if you're used to FC. I can't definitely assess how much of this is intended from the developers, but personally here I notice missing animations the most. May it be a delay of trapping the ball by the player or some really clunky touches when turning, even though you don't face any pressure from the opponent nor using sprint. Another aspect is the non-existent physical presence of your player. In FC you can control situations by just facing away from the opponent's player and protecting the ball, without explicitly using shielding as a function. In UFL this natural shield isn't really a thing. Your player will be just eaten alive from the opponent and lose the ball when they challenge for it from behind or the side. I'm not judging here, just observing and pointing out. So overall you just don't feel as much in control when dribbling with the ball. I think some of it can be compensated by getting more experience in playing the game and getting a better feel for it what you can get away with. 
In the current state of the game, pace wasn't a factor. In a lot of situations, your player wasn't really able to convert from an advantage and the opponent could easily catch up. This is also due to the missing natural shielding function of your player's body. When the opponent catches up, they can just bypass you and win the ball. While a gameplay which isn't as pace focused and dominant sounds appealing, it can also be frustrating that it is very hard to build up on a good situation that you created. So I think this needs a bit more fine tuning. Shooting is kinda hard to assess as this is a lot about balancing and in the open beta we had some shooting techniques which were totally overpowered. Outside the box finesse shots but also shooting first touch. But this isn't something to make a big fuss about. Shooting and finishing take some time to balance properly and I'm sure this will be taken care of before our potential release. The overall experience when it comes to shooting was pretty good. Alongside balancing, the biggest field of work will be the responsiveness in loose ball situations. I encountered it several times inside the box when the ball fell in front of a player and I wasn't able to make use of it because the shooting input wasn't registered. Handling those situations is pretty key as this can cause a lot of frustration. Defending might be probably the strongest part of the current version. Winning the ball with an active tackle gets rewarded and actually is somewhat mandatory because otherwise your player doesn't really challenge for the ball. Most often get good control over the ball afterwards. Interceptions, when they happen, feel also very controlled. Here and there there are situations at which you feel like your player could have intercepted the ball but this might be due to bad attribute values. The second player press with a one slash a b that we know from FC is very active and responsive. But the assignment of the second indicator feels random or misplaced at times. An issue that we know from FC as well. For all of the set pieces we have a target indicator or reticle that we aim with. A system which was also present in some iterations of FIFA at different times. Either for corners, free kicks or penalties. The aiming with this is pretty easy, but it didn't really feel rewarding. You can aim the penalty into the top corner, but when you just add a big error, what's the point of it? These kind of systems were missing a clear connection and reward between good input and a good outcome. I think it is noticeable that there wasn't a big priority on developing these, which is fair. I'd rather have a balanced gameplay experience than a totally sophisticated set piece system. This can also be updated or improved later on with ease. Before we come to the conclusion, I briefly want to touch on what kind of game mode we actually played. It was pretty similar to Ultimate Team. You manage your own club by developing your squad with resources such as credit and reputation points. So this isn't a career mode with a set league of fixtures, but you compete online against other humans in a division-based ranking system. The market to buy players isn't online, but the players have fixed prices which are the same for everyone. With playing and promotions into higher divisions, you earn the points to buy your desired players. There are also packs, but these packs don't contain players, but skins for players. With a skin, you don't get the player in your team, but you can apply the skin when you bought the player off the market and with the skin applied, you get bonuses like getting more points or a faster player development. This is another aspect. When you play with a player, the player gets XP and when you reach the next level, in that case a star, you can develop the player by choosing another bonus. Pretty interesting things and the skins look kinda sick. It's not sure how UFL will monetize this game mode, but it is plausible that skins or other cosmetics like kits, shoes, etc. could play a role here. There was almost no representation of real life clubs, leagues or competitions. As far as I know, UFL will focus on some exclusive partnership deals with clubs and also as an agreement with FIFA Pro, an organization which represents professional footballers. So we had a wide selection of players in the game with a real name, with some of these being depicted more or less realistically. And with the most popular players in current football and by earning the required funds by playing to buy these players off the market while applying cool looking skins, there was the immediate feeling of a good grind in this game. Keep in mind, the overall progression was most likely a bit sped up as we only had a few days in this beta. So we have to see how this fares in terms of long term motivation to keep playing. I definitely see some potential in UFL and it's great to see some competition in the scene. While the gameplay sometimes feels a bit rough, it looks like a good foundation to build up on. I think it's too early to dive really deep into the midst of balancing as every improvement or addition can shift it heavily, since all the different gameplay aspects are interconnected and dependent on each other. Improve dribbling and passing, you have to buff defending. There is definitely a need for more animations to transition more smoothly between different actions and increase responsiveness for certain actions. 
if UFL managed to make those improvements, it can develop into a football simulation with a steady fanbase. Especially with a game mode that directly hooks you in and hopefully isn't heavily paid to win, if at all. We have to wait and see how monetization for UFL works, as it is also free to play. That's enough for UFL today, but let us know if you want to see more videos about UFL from us, as well as potential tutorial videos. If you want to see how one of the best FC players in the world dominates the pro scene right now, click on the video in the center of the screen. Thanks for your attention, keep a clean sheet, I'm out.